So first of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Pavel Kulha. I work at uh, Profactor, which is a, a small research company located in Upper Austria. And uh, let me present shortly um, project uh, which is called Nabiam. Uh, this is it's uh, Interreg uh, project between Austria and the Czech Republic. Uh, Nabiam basically means uh, it's shortcut of nanotechnologies, biosensors, and additive manufacturing. And the aim of the project is to establish long-term relationships with uh, relevant players from research, development, and business uh, in Upper Austria and South Bohemia in the field of polymer electronics and uh, medical technology with special focus on those three topics uh, of biosensors, nanotechnology and additive manufacturing. Um, the activities which uh, we perform in, in the project should stimulate cooperation between cross-border regions of Upper Austria, South Bohemia, but we are involving, involving, involving also Lower Austria and uh, South Moravia. And uh, it, show, uh, it should show available competencies and uh, connect the research performing institution institution with, with companies. That, for example, in the future, the companies uh, can ask also for, for some services uh, which will be provided by research institutions. Uh, regarding partners uh, from Czech Republic, uh, we have uh, University of South Bohemia on board. Uh, representing the, the university research and on Austria side uh, we have uh, also uh, Upper Austria which is uh, agency um, for for business development in in Upper Austria and uh, the activities which which are performed in within within Nabiam um, are divided in let's say three main sections. Uh, we organize uh, reciprocal scientific lectures with focus on those three topics. We uh, organize uh, or, or prepare a competence map including infrastructure and equipment and available technologies and those uh, are presented in webinars. This is the first webinar in the series. Um, the next will be in May uh, with a special focus on biosensors. And the last uh, in end of June with focus uh, with special focus on additive manufacturing. In June, we also plan additive uh, online matchmaking event. And one of the goal is also to to prepare uh, ideas for a joint project joint projects. Uh, which uh, will be then submitted for uh, or into uh, either Interreg, Horizon, Europe, MRNet, or other calls, which will be available also for, for uh, small and medium enterprises. And for this, we are actually looking for partners. So if you are interested, follow our uh, social media and uh, the pages and uh, contact us. And now I want to hand over to to my colleague from Bizap Johannes and he will shortly present our activities in competence mapping and uh, business to business activities. So Johan the yes thank you um fine, yeah. okay thank you um my name is Johan Zaber and I'm here um as a substitute for my colleague Peter Dunzendorfer, who unfortunately couldn't make it today. So he asked me to just give you a short uh, presentation and overview over the matchmaking event. Um, and first of all, he would like to say a few words about the competence map. Um, so basically, they made a questionnaire about the topics of nanotechnology, biosensors, and additive manufacturing. And they would like to kindly ask each and every one of you to take part in this survey. And after that, the results of the questionnaires will create a competence map 
uh, which should be show the members of the value chain versus the business focus. Um, now to the mutual matchmaking event, uh, it will be held on the 29th and the 30th of June um, for two days. Uh, we are planning to have a total of three keynotes in, um, in the relevant topics, which are yet to be determined. And we have um, five B2B matchmaking slots. Um, so if you want to register for it, please go to the link. And there is a website for the matchmaking event. Just register, fill out your profile, and that's about it. Um, if you're asking yourself why to participate, well, first of all, you can showcase your expertise, your service, and your product, and you can find uh, suitable partners there. So the goal is to establish cooperation. And it, it's, uh, it works so that you first you have to register. Uh, we check your registration if everything is um, filled out in, with the proper quality. So the better you fill out your profile, the better it is for other participants to book meetings with you so they they know what you you can offer and um, every requested meeting has to be um, confirmed or denied so it's very important that you fill out your profile accordingly and that's about it and then you can participate in the meetings so, um, do you have any questions? I would have a question from AIT, Laszlo's IT. Yes. Uh, are you looking for industrial partners or research partners? This was not completely clear for me. We are a research institute from AIT. Also, Jakub Dostalek is here. Uh, mm -hmm. You are looking for this matchmaking uh, either or both uh, industrial or only industrial or also research partners? Um, it's open. So we are searching for every partner who can contribute in these three topics, has an expertise in it, um, and that's open. So you can register and you look for partners that um, suit your needs. OK, thank you. Any other questions? OK, thank you, Johan, for, for this introductory presentation. OK, I ask participants to join the B2B meeting. Thank you. And if you have any questions, um, just send an email and we'll be happy to provide you with help. So now I want to introduce uh, my colleague Michael Milberger, uh, which is expert for nanoimprint lithography and in Profactor. And um, Michael will actually chair this session. And uh, yeah, place smart questions also after the, after the presentations and also introduce shortly the, the, the presenters. So here is the agenda and now I'm giving over my word to, to Michael. Thank you very much, Pavel. Um, yeah, and thanks to the, the Nabiam project uh, for setting up this, this webinar today. And already up front, thank to all the speakers who agreed to participate here and present their work. Um, as you can see here, we have uh, in total um, five speakers, including me. I will also give a short uh, talk about what we are doing here at Profactor in the field of, of nanoimprint lithography. Uh, then we will have uh, Martin Eibelhuber from EVG uh, present uh, their activities on nanoimprint lithography and, and photonics. 
uh, followed by uh, Jakub Dosterleck from the Austrian Institute of Technology talking about plasmonic nanomaterials for biosensors. Uh, we will then have a presentation by Professor Thomas Klar from the Johannes Kepler University in Linz about three-dimensional micro and nanostructures written with two-photon lithography. And uh, the final presentation today will be given by Viteslav Straniak from the University of South Bohemia on low-temperature plasma-assisted deposition of thin films for nanotechnology. Um, I'm very much looking forward to all of these presentations. Uh, I think, Pavel, the plan is that uh, we have about, uh, each speaker has about 15 minutes for a presentation. We have a, a time buffer at the end, so there is the possibility to have uh, one or two questions after each presentation. Uh, and if there are more questions, we can also uh, ask them at the end of, of the session. I want to ask participants just to raise hand uh, if they, if someone wants to uh, place a questions and uh, we will then moderate the discussion. Yeah, there's also the possibility to ask questions directly in the chat. Exactly. And, but I think uh, we can also handle this by, by raising hands um, in, in teams. So this would work fine. Okay. So I'm um, stopping sharing, Michael, and uh, you will continue with your presentation now. Perfect. Thank you, Pavel. Um, let me share my presentation with you. So here we are. You should be able to see my screen now. Does it work? Yes. yes, we can see it well. Perfect. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, I will briefly tell you about our nanoprint activities at ProFactor, focusing uh, on what we're doing for R&D applications uh, for optics using step and repeat and rotor plate nanoprint lithography. Um, most probably. All of you know about Profactor, but still very briefly, um, Profactor is a research institution, non-university research institution located in Upper Austria in Steyr. And there are basically two uh, main research topics at Profactor. One is industrial assistance systems, which has a lot to do with robotic, with uh, machine vision, human robotic collaboration. Uh, and the other one is on additive micro and nano manufacturing, and this is uh, where also the nano and print lithography activities are located. Uh, and the second type of activities ongoing in, in this group is uh, about functional inkjet printing, which also includes 3D uh, printing, 3D inkjet printing. Um, Concerning nanoimprint lithography, uh, we cover a wide range of, of, of things. We go from basic research to, to process development for pre-production type of processes. We cover different applications uh, from optics to life sciences and also cover a large range of feature sizes, which is one of the nice things in nanoimprint lithography. We go from 10 nanometers to 100 micrometers or even larger. In general, we do uh, large area nano imprinting in rotor plate mode or in step and repeat mode. We also do nano imprint lithography on complex surfaces like 3D printed objects. I will not talk about this today, but we also do conventional wafer scale nil and we also build our own equipment to uh, cover the needs for, of our processes and customers. Um, just very, very briefly what nanoimprint lithography is. Uh, so you take a, a stamp which contains the negative features uh, you want to have on your surface. You press your stamp into a liquid polymer which is coated on your substrate. Uh, the polymer fills the cavities. You do some UV curing, in our case, to harden the polymer. 
and you can remove the stamp and you have replicated those structures. So it's a replication process for, for nanostructures. Um, and I will, uh, the main part of my talk will basically be on nano imprinting of nanoscale features for, for metamaterials and plasmonic application. Uh, and if there is still some, some time left, I will also talk about nano imprinting for micro optics. First example I want to show to you uh, is uh, actually a few years old already. It was what was done in a European Union funded project where the goal was to fabricate uh, metamaterials with negative refractive index using nano imprint lithography. So we had uh, several partners included here, also the JQU in that case. Uh, and what, what we did in this project, we developed a, a nano print process for, for lift off, uh, which basically works uh, as you can see, as it's sketched here. So we have a substrate and we have a two layer resist system. The top one is nanostructured using nano imprint lithography. Uh, and the second one is used for the lift off uh, in later states. So the nanostructures are imprinted, the residual layer is removed, uh, and an undercut is created. And after this, the substrate here is, is free, so that we can deposit um, well, actually different types of material. And in this case, we deposit a multi-layer stack of, of gold, titanium, magnesium oxide, titanium, and gold. And after that, uh, the resin, the imprinted stru the structures here are removed in using liftoff. And what remains are those structures directly on the substrate. Uh, if you have such a substrate, I mean, this, uh, it, it looks like this, so it was um, a few square centimeters only in, in this case. Um, and if you have such a structure, multi-layer on the substrate, you can remove it from the substrate. Uh, and this was done by embedding it into liquid Omocomp material, which was coated on, on glass wafer. Uh, it is cured, and it is, when it is removed again from the substrate, this structured material stays within the Omocomp. Uh, and you can do this several times and using this process, create a multi-layer uh, of those negative index material decks. And this is what it looks like in the end. So you have those uh, multi-layers which are deposited in one go, and then they are stacked on top of each other. And the advantage of such a process is that you do the, uh, the, the whole single layer processing on a on a simple substrate and then you can edit if it works you can edit on top of your already multi-layer stack you have already processed so uh, a process where we created a thicker layer of negative index material uh, i'm not the expert on the optical properties of such things uh, uh, but there were measurements done on this and as far as I understood, there were actually lots of discussion uh, what the results mean, uh, the goal to achieve a negative ref refractive index um, was successfully achieved. A second example, a more recent project uh, where we used a very similar process uh, was on the fabrication of uh, magnetic plasmonic nanoparticles for biomolecular sensing. Uh, the sensing principle uh, is briefly sketched here. So we have particles which are functionalized on the surface. Uh, and if uh, the biomolecule that you want to detect is, is in the solution, um, it attaches to the surface and the rotation uh, of this particle in an external magnetic field is changed. And this can be detected uh, using optical, optical means. Uh, and the challenge here is to have these magnetic and plasmonic nanoparticles and to have a very narrow size di distribution of these particles. And we decided to use a nano imprint lithography to fabricate those particles. 
Uh, and the process was basically very, very similar. So you have a double layer, which is coated on the substrate. You do the nano imprinting. Um, you open up the, the resist uh, up to the bottom, to the substrate. You create an undercut. Again, you deposit your material, uh, which again was a multi-layer stack in this case. Uh, and you end up with the, with the particles uh, on your substrate. This then looks like this. So in this case, this uh, elliptical particles. Uh, and those particles can then be removed and put into solution, uh, can be removed from the substrates. Here you see uh, the individual nanoparticles, which were prepared by nano imprinting and lift off and then removed uh, from the substrate. Um, if you have um, such a process, you can do uh, lots of things. You can also actually do uh, the, the, the opposite. So you can uh, invert the polarity of your, of your stamp. So create grids uh, and use them, for example, uh, for light wrapping or scattering and excitation of surface plasmons in uh, organic solar cells. This is one additional application we uh, followed in the solar trap project uh, led by JKU. Another application which we looked into was to use such structures for solar thermal absorbers uh, for solar thermal uh, power plants, concentrated solar power. So where also these structures can be used to tune absorption and emissivity of surfaces. Um, I said, um, as you can, as you have seen, maybe the structure and area of the samples that I showed so far was rather small. If we want to go for larger areas, we have we have built our own small step and repeat tool. Uh, and here you can see a wafer where these uh, fields, nanostructured fields, were imprinted sequentially in a step and repeat process. Uh, this uh, wafer was, uh, this stepper was actually initially developed to, for material testing to uh, evaluate the compatibility between stamp material and imprint material. Uh, and it has several features so we can monitor the imprinting pressure uh, and can see how this evolves over time. And as you can see here, for example, this is the force versus uh, imprinting time during one imprinting step. And after 400 imprints, 700 imprints, and so on. And you can monitor if the stamp degrades or if the separation force changes, So, that, which is very helpful uh, for process development. Mm, yeah, of course, uh, we also looked into evalu evaluation behavior if the shape of the nanoscale features changes over time. Uh, and we have, we published this for a very for this special resist um, where we see that this actually very nice and compatible with our PDMS stamps. Um, so if you want to even go to even larger. Uh, areas uh, you can take such a sample which was a step and repeat printed and make one large printing plate from such a sample and for example use this in a, in a rotor plate nano imprint tool and uh, do an imprint of the full area in one printing step and then you can end up with many many samples which is for example also relevant if you want to have many nanoparticles for the biosensing example I showed earlier. Um, one last thing uh, on the nanostructures is also the replication of biomimetic nanostructures, which we did in the, in the roller nil project. Um, so uh, as, you, as you know, um, the morpho butterfly structures are a very famous example for structural colors in nature. And these structures are very complex in shape and create this metallic blue uh, color. Um, and 
we tried to, we wanted to see if such structures can be replicated in an unimprint lithography step. And we started with such single T-shaped structures uh, and wanted to look at those type of tree-shaped structures. Uh, and actually, uh, we showed if, if we find the right material to do so, uh, this can be really done. Um, so what you see here on the top left is the stamp, uh, which we used to fabricate, uh, is the master, which we used to fabricate the stamp, which you can see in the middle. Uh, and the stamp was used to do an imprint, which you see on the right bottom. So you can see that uh, from the mastering process, you have a slight tapering angle here, and this is nicely replicated also in the stamp, and finally also in the imprint. Uh, and in the end, we also managed to do this for, for multi-layer structures. Um, again, here's the, the master structure. Uh, a stamp was replicated and successfully imprinted. You can see these uh, lamella structures here. One of the big challenges here was actually also the imaging of those structures uh, in the cross-section to make sure that you have replicated the undercut here. And during sample preparation, uh, most probably there are some deformations happening. So this is why they stick together here. Yeah, I think I'm already uh, very much at the end. I want to very, very briefly tell you that we're doing very similar processes also for microstructures. So we do a step and repeat, taking those uh, uh, step and repeated uh, multi-masters, so to say, and putting them into our roll to plate tool. So we have built a separate tool for this purpose where we use droplet dispensing for each imprinting step and you can take, for example, a um, CD file, SDL file, uh, 3D print the master, step and repeat it uh, over a large area. And uh, yeah, and we used a similar process together with a big Austrian company making jewelry stones and fabricated micro optical structures on top of the individual stones, crystals, so to say here, uh, in our large area road to play tool, we did this. Okay, so this is to the end. Um, I hope I could sh give you a brief uh, insight into what we are doing in the field of nanoimprinting, at least a part of it. Uh, that nanoimprinting is a very versatile tool. Uh, and suited for a wide range of applications, also for optics, but not only. Yeah, and if you have any challenging, interesting ideas, we would be happy to discuss this with you. Um, at the end, I have to acknowledge uh, lots of collaborators and projects, as you can see here, funding from national and European sources, uh, and especially all the colleagues involved uh, in this work, especially Sonja Kopp and Michael Hakinger. Um, yeah, and thank you for your attention. Are there any questions? So I will. Stop sharing. Did I already stop sharing? Yeah. Okay, good. Yes. Yes, very good. So, Jakub Dostalek has a question. So, Jakub, please. Okay, I hope I know how to do it. Uh, Michael, I, uh, I wanted to ask on this uh, uh, lab on a beat concept, which I remember uh, the work of, I mean, Hubert, when he tried to do this with his uh, chemically synthesized beats and particles. And, yeah. okay, now I see you. I mean, you took another route to make them. So what is the advantage then to kind of go for the nil approach? Yeah, um, so there are, I think there could be, depending on what you need, there could be two two advantages. One of this is that, um, uh, actually, I think the main advantage is that you are not limited to any uh, chemical 
uh, boundary conditions, so to say, what is feasible from the chemical side mm. as far as the materials you are concerned. So you have this uh, this template and then you can spot the uh, evaporate deposit, uh, whatever material sequence basically you like. Mm -hmm. um, so you can you can play around there quite a bit. Uh, I'm quite sure in chemistry you can also play around a bit, quite a bit. Uh, but this is uh, was one of the ideas. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. There is also a second question from Alexander Kromka. Please. Yeah. Yes, Alex speaking. Nice talk. Uh, would I have a question regarding the planarization of your sample? For example, can you estimate the maximal surface roughness where still nano imprinting lithography will be working? Several films which we deposit have some surface roughness in mm -hmm. order 10, 100 nanometers up to 1 micrometer. Um, yeah, actually, uh, Actually, we're also doing non-imprint lithography on, on rough surfaces. Um, uh, this depends on, on, on the, I would say this depends on, on the local curvature that you, that you have and on the type of nanostructures you want to have on your surface. Um, I don't have an image uh, with me right now. I mean, we can maybe talk, talk later more in detail. Uh, but uh, for example, what we have done, we have imprinted a, a grating structure which was like 200 nanometers high at a few hundred mic uh, nanometers in period on top of a, of a diffuser structure, which is more like uh, several tens of micrometers height, but very, very smooth surface. So this is possible, but would have to be looked into for, for each, each detail. You know, for okay. Each application. Thanks, mm -hmm. I will contact and with Pavel Kulha and we will discuss details, thanks. Thank you. Okay, um, let's continue. Um, I would like to ask uh, Martin Eibelhuber to, to bring up his screen. Um, Martin, yes, you're here. You're still muted. Um, Martin is Deputy Head of Business Development at EVG and will present EVG's activities in the field of photonics. Please, Hello. Martin, go ahead. Hope you can hear me now. Yes. Uh, perfect. So, yes, uh, so uh, I think uh, Michael did a great job to introduce already what can be done with the nano imprinting. And at DVG, uh, we are equipment supplier and we aim here, of course, uh, also to see that we see such products in high volume. And uh, we work here really from the R&D level to the OEMs on o on this development and I want to show a little bit uh, what can be done and what was already achieved uh, in this field. So uh, just very brief about EVG. Uh, we are equipment suppliers already mentioned and we are mainly active in the uh, field of the semiconductor market, uh, including the MEMS and the nanotechnology. Uh, our company is now more than 40 years uh, and more than 1,000 employees worldwide, and we are also worldwide active with subsidiaries. However, the headquarter and the main activity and all key developments are still taking place in Austria. And here on the bottom line, you can see uh, a number of products which we have launched recently, and here you can also uh, maybe recognize that there are different categories of equipment we have uh, about uh, wafer bonding is one of our key topics, but also lithography, temporary bonding, debonding, and the nano imprint lithography. And we are re really proud that we are with many of this technology really on the leading edge of the semiconductor or microelectronic technologies, like for example, uh, 3D stacking of memories and image sensors, or also uh, we are getting new systems into the front end of line, developing uh, capabilities for the new new uh, semiconductor nodes. So the uh, three and two nanometer nodes, uh, we assume that our products uh, will be enabling uh, these uh, new uh, chips. And of course, the nanoimplant lithography, I want to talk uh, today a little bit more. Uh, as uh, Michael already showed nicely, there are 
key applications and you can really spread it out to many things, but the photonics and the biomed have proven in the recent years that they are kind of a sweet spot for the nanoimprint technology because they need alternative technologies, in particular uh, due to these different shapes that are required compared to microelectronics. Uh, for example, very easily explained for the refractive optics, it's two and a half D, 3D shapes, also diffractive optics and so on, uh, where a replication based technology can have uh, big advantages. And what we see is a, a trend to smaller and smaller uh, uh, resolution. So metamaterials and pl plasmonics are currently a hot topic in our field. And similar capabilities, of course, can be leveraged to the biomedical technologies. Um, today, I want to focus on one topic uh, that's really nanostructures as permanent layers. There are different flavors what we are working on in the nanoimprint. One we would rather call the lens molding. It's the micro-optical stuff, uh, stacking modules for sensors. And we have the smart needle that's uh, transferring about uh, of nano patterns here in a permanent fashion or sometimes using it similar to optical lithography, uh, transferring a pattern then later by etching into it. Uh, but I would start because there was tremendous developments in the last years with the permanent layers. And one reason for that was uh, the augmented reality. Augmented reality waveguides uh, are uh, the next big thing, some people think, and uh, we hope so too, because that would be really, really uh, yeah, also for the nanoimprint lithography, it is already a big breakthrough, but it would be even uh, more showing the, the volume uh, capabilities. And the reason to use nanoimprinting for augmented reality is on the one hand side, there are nanostructures that are quite complex. They have to be in a, a relatively large area compared to a microchip. Uh, then uh, there are also complex shapes, uh, not only binary shapes, but also placed or slanted uh, is very famous. And this you can do with replication-based technologies. And I want to show here one example where we are allowed to talk about. Uh, one of our customers active in the field is Wave Optics, and this is the product. It's uh, one layer of the augmented reality waveguide. And uh, uh, this one uh, is made on our equipment and nanoimprint. Uh, and this is also something that's sourced from their web page, uh, where they show how the whole process works. You have basically the mastering, you make a master stamp, you go to a step and repeat nanoimprint process, and then you go to the production nanoimprinting, and then you add some layers. And basically, they came to us for the development because of these two steps, because uh, they had this kind of one structure, but did not know how to get this to volume. And uh, we work together to uh, find a way to scale this into a volume production and to make it possible that, to make of their optical design a, a, a product uh, on a level that it can be uh, used for the uh, yeah, consumer industry and not only uh, very expensive. So the task what we had was basically going from oops, uh, one device, as you can see it here, on the left hand side and kind of scale it to a wafer level replication technology uh, where we started with the eight inch. Uh, we had roughly placed 10 such dies and then on the wafer level we replicate always 10 by 10 and this makes of course much more efficient. And uh, in the past two years we further scaled to 12 inch or 300 millimeter and you can see then we can again more than double the amount of devices that can be made by one imprint. And of course, this is a challenge to do so because there are many steps and many things to consider. Of course, first you need a, a good design and a good master with very good quality. Of course, what I show here is not the uh, proprietary design, it's a reference where we did comparable processes, but the principle is all the same. You have uh, here the nanostructures, and then you start with the step and repeat, and with every uh, step, of course, you have to transfer perfect quality and similar quality to this new master. And when you are finished, you have a full wafer, 12 inch wafer with all the structures next to each other. And then actually the production process starts, which we do with our uh, proprietary smart technology, uh, where we make in the same system first working stamps, and then we do the replica 
of uh, the nanostructures. And this is possible to control it all over uh, uh, the steps and uh, all these multiple steps. As you can see here with uh, this uh, uh, AFM image of the shown nanostructure before, which is made of pillars. And you can see we can keep the, the pillar height and the pillar diameter almost constant. There are some deviations due to shrinkage of the materials. That's quite normal for all uh, UV curing material. However, if you understand this whole process, you can bias this and then compensate already in the master design. This was done, the whole project, and uh, now they have a very nice product that's going to the market. And in the high volume then actually, so when you have uh, the structures, uh, it's also important to be here very efficient and to have good materials in place. And it's not only about uh, just what you get on the wave, it already starts by making the working stamp because you need anti-sticking layers, you need special working stamp materials. Even the back plane, what you are using for your stamp is important to understand. Then of course you need an efficient curing process so we don't work with PDMS anymore because it's not efficient enough uh, for high volume. It takes uh, several hours to cure in good quality. So we rather tend to use UV curing materials we developed on our own. And uh, then you have a, a, this unique working stamp. And on the, then when you have this working stamp, you can go actually to the production process. So where you put the imprint resin and it's a functional resin uh, that you need here. Uh, which also has to have the right optical properties. In case of augmented reality waveguides, it's a uh, very high refractive index. Nowadays, it's, uh, the resin suppliers are capable to deliver here materials with refractive index up to 1.9, but still it has to have very good filling properties. And of course, there is the interaction surface uh, energy sense on of the stamp and the resin is very important. And of course, again, the process has to be very efficient that you have fast curing materials, that you have high yielding release, and then you can make multiple imprints from one working stamp and do this all in the same equipment. And these are things we have mastered uh, together uh, with wave optics, but not only with them alone. And basically what uh, we can deliver today to, to the market as equipment supplier systems that are really huge, as you can see, uh, uh, that, with, uh, that can basically do the whole process from one from a blank uh, glass wafer that's going in to a full product that's going out, even with very complex structures like shown below, like slant gratings going even in different directions. And uh, yeah, what we have to do for that is uh, basically uh, really go into different cycles. So not everything is immediately mass production. So most of the projects and also with wave optics, it started very small. This was a very small startup when they came the first time to us. It was just a few wafers, less than 10 wafers. Where is this? That we have a design. Can you try it? Is it feasible? Is it doable? And uh, so we typically start when people come to us to our competence center. We start with the evaluation and trying to make a kind of best known method, as uh, it's called, uh, to show uh, that it's in principle doable and the nano imprinting is the right approach. And from then on, the actual work starts to bring it to the mass manufacturing uh, that you make uh, not only the, the test that it can be done, but you really develop a process of record where all the parameters are set, the influences of the parameters are known, that you can go to the mass manufacturing. And when you are in the mass manufacturing, actually, then of course, there are further learning curves to do to get here uh, efficient production and get the cost structure down. And the nice thing here is we really invested a lot that EVG can support here on this whole journey until the product and the production is uh, transferred uh, to the customer site. There then uh, hopefully we can see a lot of uh, nice products coming to the market. And yeah, uh, how to make it ready? That's a lot about partnerships. So we don't do anything, uh, don't, don't do all these things here alone. So uh, you need a lot of understanding from fundamentals, of course, where people like Profactor, for example, working on it and see how the processes can be improved. However, uh, also the materials that are used. So 
for a, a mass product, when we look at such a component like a waveguide, the glass, the refractive index material, and so on are, are very important. And of course, and by the end of the day, you have to uh, get the product idea, the design uh, perfectly transferred into this uh, high volume manufacturing. And yeah, this is what we do at EVG, and we have proven here uh, for different formats, for different products and so on. Of course, that's one of the window products, the augmented reality, that's uh, uh, really amazing what happened here just the, the last five years, you can say. Uh, uh, we engaged uh, roughly around 2013 with the first feasibilities, but it really took off then uh, around 2015. I would say, and uh, we see this for many other products. And uh, yeah, what we are working on, what we are looking for is, you have seen now how to develop a component, how much effort it is, but we are working also on modules of further integration with semiconductor products on different levels. For example, here, another partner, we are working with is also a small company, Nano Lambda. They use nanostructures on top of an image sender with multiple process steps to use the, uh, to, to get here a uh, a spectrometer that's uh, fully digital, uh, no moving parts anymore, and uh, thousands of measurement points in a single shot. And therefore, you need also, you cannot use the standard absorptive filters anymore. You need uh, nanostructures for the filtering. Uh, also, I mentioned already meta materials, meta lenses, something we are currently working on. I think that also will give an, another level of integration uh, to semiconductor products. And we are very much looking forward to to see here further developments and also find partners and work together. And one, uh, I also want to mention here, we are working with Profact and this uh, is uh, Tinker. It's a European funded project. So this is also an option where we often do our learnings um, to develop new types of uh, LIDARs based on photonic integration. And uh, obviously this is also another challenge uh, that we want to address with the nano imprint with Sobitro. Uh, we invested a lot into that and we are highly welcome also to visit us uh, and discuss with us if you have any ideas about projects. Uh, yeah, and that's that's it from my side. Of course, you heard it at the very beginning. We are not only limited to the nano imprint. Uh, we also do many other project uh, processes like the wafer bonding, the uh, optical lithography and so on. Uh, so if there are any questions uh, to this, of course, let me know as well. Thank you very much, and I'm open for questions. Thank you very much, Martin. Thanks for being perfectly in time. Uh, are there questions? Uh, yes. Please, go ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, I have a question concerning uh, the durability of the stamp. Of course, I guess this is material dependent, but can you give just a rough estimation how many times uh, one stamp uh, can be used? There, um, there is really a very broad range, to be honest. So uh, what we always say is that it makes uh, business-wise sense is uh, the minimum of one wave a lot. Uh, because the costs of such a stamp are not so high. So the, the first stamp, the um, the, master, the original master stamp is expensive uh, because it's done by even writing, but then we have already a replica which is fully polymeric, so the costs of the materials are not so high. Anymore. However, the lifetime of a stamp, uh, we have uh, confirmed, production confirmed numbers of uh, 100 to 150, and then the, the two uh, preventive uh, changes. Uh, and here then it, later it depends a lot what is your yield level or what is your expectations. We know that for simple structures, several hundred imprints are even possible. But if you go for very complex slanted stuff, of course, this reduces your lifetime. And uh, this is other trade-offs. But uh, I would say the, the standard range where you have uh, a good production capability is, uh, is in the range of uh, 25 to 100 uh, for almost all, uh, even for complex structures. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Um, further questions? I, I have one. Uh, Martin, you, you mentioned in the beginning that uh, you, you 
briefly said that for the three nanometer nodes and so on, uh, your, your tools uh, might be in enabling. Do you also think about nano imprint lithography tools or other types of tools? No, this is in that case, it's the wafer bonding. I think for the nano imprint, uh, it's a, a bit further to go to get there. However, uh, I think for the nano imprint, it's also getting interesting again to get closer to the um, electronic manufacturing to really compete here with conventional lithography. Uh, we have see here quite some interest in terms of electronic packaging. So it's not really the the, uh, mm -hmm. the high end nodes, but I think there is a, there are some very interesting entry points nowadays also to imprint functional layers for new types of packages. Very good. Thank, thank you, Martin.